What y'all two doing? Hey everybody, this is gonna be a, a different video because uh, I'm holding a guitar that has a hole in it because it's acoustical in design. Um, the guitar I'm holding, uh, should you want to know or inquire, is a McPherson Camriel. Uh, it's a 3.5 and it just sounds fabulous. This is my uh, personal guitar. The reason I got this out uh, was so that I could uh, show you guys the uh, Grace Designs Alex preamp. They sent me this out to try, and I was really, really uh, impressed with how it sounded. So I thought, you know, I don't often do, I hardly ever do anything involving acoustic guitars, and I thought you guys might like to hear it. So I'm not going to go, uh, you know, like a deep dive kind of demo, even though I still do in-depth demos. Um, I'm going to stay a little bit more... Uh, uh, along the lines of, hey, here's how I arrived at this sound. So to get started, what you're going to need to know is what pickup is in this guitar. Um, I've been using uh, K and K sound pickups for a really long time. The only pickup I use is called the Pure Mini. I dig it because it sounds about as close as you're going to get to a mic um, within the price range it's in. Um, it's very non-invasive as far as the install on the guitar, which I dig, but you can hear... I mean, it sounds like there's a mic in there. And the hard thing for me was, especially uh, when I was playing with uh, Carrie Underwood, especially when I did the Storyteller tour, and yes, that thing that just clanked onto your feet was me dropping a name. I think it fell on my foot. But all that to say, I was playing really big arenas, I wanted a guitar that still sounded like it was somewhat in front of a microphone, and uh, this setup worked really, really well. Every once in a while, I'd have a, a notch issue depending on where I was on that big stage as far as feedback, but the, very seldomly. So that's why I have this pickup. There's a bunch of really great pickups out there, but this is what I use. Um, now on to the Alex uh, by Grace Designs. Um, the first thing I noticed with this when I plugged into it is the main problem I had with uh, the pickups that I use, uh, the Pure Mini, is impedance issues. I could never really find a preamp that actually liked this pickup. Um, with the uh, the Alex, you can choose between three different uh, input or impedance uh, settings at the input. So if you've got active pickups, it's going to work great. If you've got totally passive pickups, it's gonna work really well. It just depends on how you set it up. But I, that was the first thing I noticed is, wow, I'm not struggling with uh, the impedance on this. So the way it's set up is the low frequency, I believe on this guy, you basically have a high, low, and mid. The low frequency on it, I think is set at 125 Hertz. Uh, booster cut and that's a uh, 12 dB right now. I've got it centered uh, The high pass uh, frequency you can actually choose between whether you want that to be a high pass filter I don't know why I said frequency a high pass filter or uh, a notch Either way, uh, however you use it right now. I'm using it as a high pass filter It will cut uh, 12 dB or notch 12 dB depending on how you set it up And there's a dip switch on the side there that allows you to choose. I liked it uh, at least in this setting in this room, I liked it uh, more as just a high-pass uh, filter. Now I can bump lows so we can make it a little more thumpy. And obviously, this isn't going to translate as well on, you know, your iPhone or, you know, laptop speakers. If you can, put on some uh, headphones. But... So I can add a lot of low end there. To me, that's getting to the point where that's not natural. That's not how an acoustic guitar would sound. So, you know, if I was on a session or even on, on stage, like the front of house guy would be like, hey, Junior, turn down the low end, nerd. <laughs> and he would be right. Now, uh, what I'm doing is I actually like the 125 hertz set frequency. I didn't think I would, um, but I do when I'm using it along with my high pass uh, filter. So if I turn that all the way off, there's a sub there that's going to get a little bit out of control.
right there sounds pretty natural. And then if I want to add just a little bit more low, I can, or if I really need to just cut a bunch, I can do that, but I can also do that by sweeping the high pass filter. So that alone is killer. Uh, the mid, uh, well, let's check out the high. The high frequency, I believe, and go to the site and read the dang manual. But I think the high frequency is set at 2K and up. Um, so it'll, it'll either boost 2K frequencies and up, or it will cut 2K frequencies and, and, and up, essentially. Uh, and I think the shoulder on it is like 3 dB, but it's, it's definitely a shelf. And once again, I was kind of put off by that. I was like, ooh, 2K. That's what I'm always trying to cut out, but I'll get to how I fix that. So right now it's flat. I think that sounds really nice, but you can, you know, get some zing on there. It's really musical. Now to address the, the 2K issue, that's that's a frequency I just hate. I call it the, the duck being tortured in the mud frequency. It's this. Oh. <laughs> so what's great about that is I can cut that frequency. You can choose between two different mid, uh, basically high and low mid frequencies. Right now I've got it in the high setting, you can choose on the side. There's a dip switch that allows you to do that. Um, and that frequency is what I want to cut. Oh, man. Um, so I can cut that back a little bit. Because what will happen is if I start bumping these highs, it's going to start bringing that frequency out a little bit. Uh, so around 2K here is where I can notch that back and sweeten it back up. And then if I do need to bring some back in, especially if I'm doing like a single note thing, um, if I want it to cut better, I can bring that back. But for the most part, I like that, you know, that duck quack thing to be turned down a bit, especially with uh, piezo pickups. P-I, pi with pickups that aren't what I have, um, the, you know, pi piezo, um, those can get pretty quacky. Now you also have a mid Q, which is so cool. That's just allowing you to choose the shape of that frequency. Do you want it really sharp or do you want it to be more kind of a bell curve? Right now I've got it a little bit more pointed, so it's a little more specific to that frequency. But once again, dial it in, you know, for what works for you. So um, let's see. Oh, there's a boost on there. So when you're on stage with Ted Nugent and you need to take that big rock and roll solo. Boom, big rock and roll solo. Um, that thing actually sounds really good. And I wish I would have had something like that when I was playing with Carrie, especially when we would do uh, smaller kind of broken down sets, but it's still bass, drums, guitar. Uh, I would need to take a solo, and honestly, I couldn't hear what I was playing. I could have played anything. It wouldn't matter. Um, it would have been nice to have something like that. It's very musical sounding, sounds great. And obviously, the you know you have a tuner mute, so you have a tuner out. Now, the reverb you're hearing on this is um, uh, it's on the television set, um, and I think it's just the it's called Little Plate by I think it's Sound Toys. But anyways, that's what I'm using. If you do want to have uh, basically an effects looper insert, you know, on the uh, the grace, it's there. Um, so you could put a reverb in there and insert that, and it would sound killer. I just decided to do it on the television set, and I have to have reverb because otherwise I can't play an acoustic guitar. So that's the reverb you're uh, hearing. Uh, tuner out, obviously. Um, the way you're hearing this thing is literally the simplest way I could think to run it. So I'm running the XLR out, 
at line level into the line level input on my Apogee Quartet. So you're only hearing the Apogee Quartet preamp. I'm not running it through anything else. And I think it, I think it sounds really, really great. Uh, you can run 12 volt uh, Phantom, uh, I believe on this guy. Um, check the support page for sure, but I think you can. It's because so many people, I, I don't miss, obviously it's passive, but if you have a preamp in your guitar, the majority of those are gonna run at like 12 volts. So you can use this to power it via Phantom. So that's, that's actually really, really cool. But anyways, I just wanted to, uh, you know, see what you guys thought. I'd love to hear your comments below, uh, especially on what, what are you acoustic guitar players using? Um, I tended to just use the usual, not, th not that they're bad, but I would use like LR bags. Um, there was a time early, early on when I was using a uh, pendulum audio stuff. Um, but so far, um, I'm really impressed with this. I'm impressed with how, uh, uh, complete it is in such a small package. Um, it covers a ton of bases. Um, it's very quiet. It's totally studio grade sounding to me. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys use um, and, and what's been working and what pickups are you guys using? I mean, I've been using these uh, KK sounds for, for years, but I'd love to hear, you know, you guys' thoughts uh, on that front. <laughs> so as always, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, ring that bell, because I'm going to be doing a lot more of these types of just kind of impromptu uh, videos uh, as time goes on. And uh, yeah, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll still do in-depth demos, I promise. These are just more uh, for me. I just think they're interesting and, uh, and you know, want to just put up content that you guys might find uh, interesting. So see you next time, kids.